go. Keep them all with me. All right, let's have the legs nice and wide. We'll start with the head and the arms only. Try and stabilize the rest of the body. So we're drawing a big circle with the head and the arms. Taking it almost like a lovely morning stretch all the way up and over, letting the head drop to one side. As we come across the body, that upper back, the back of the neck getting a little bit of a release, and we're staying in the same direction. Spreading the fingers, reaching into that side bend, each successive round, we're going a little bit deeper into these circles, gradually lowering down to a deep side bend, the mid back here, other side and open let's have two more in this direction so you know you're approaching your edge without forcing and the last big one in this direction stretch open wide all the way down to the floor hamstring stretch brushing the floor and opening wide let the arms down other side head arms because we're leading in a different direction, the experience might be a little bit different. So we're going to go slowly, get bigger. So this coming to the side, open twist, lateral flexion of the spine. And again, let's say two more in this direction, just to give you uh, ability to pace yourselves. And last time, and when you're finished, let's shrug out the shoulders, soft knees. <sighs> All right, I'm going to start you with the palms together. We're looking to the right, so we're opening the left hand to the left. So opening wide, stretching the front arm forwards as you look around, and then breathe out close. Other side, leading with the right arm, look over that left shoulder, up, mirroring you, stretch the arms open wide, and then coming together. Let's have two more rounds. And keep the chin parallel to the floor. We've taken that circular movement with the head, but this swiveling is finding where our range of movement is today on each side, last time each side. Might be a little bit arms heavy today. So at any point you need to shrug out the shoulders, particularly if you've had any rotator cuff niggles, any impingement there. Be nice and kind to yourself. Shrug out the shoulders and the hands. We're taking a wide leg fold. Uh, with the hands in prayer, let's just watch. Breathe in, opening the arms overhead, hands come into prayer. We're bending the knees so they track over the toes. We're melting all the way down to the floor with the knees bent, hands on the floor. Then press into the hands, press into the feet to straighten the legs and stand up tall. Off we go again, three more of those. Breathe in, tall as you can be. Breathing out, knees bent, tracking over the toes. Get those inner thighs working. Find the floor, carry the head to the floor, straightening up the legs, opening the arms wide. So hopefully using a little bit of core strength there to help you stand up tall. Melting down here, if anyone feels they want to take a sneaky little crow. There's time for a little concussion there. Last time, hands come into prayer and lower. Let's, before we go into it, goddess squats, let's just stretch the outer hip. So step your right foot diagonal and in front of the left. And then lean into that hip and reach up and over. Grip the floor with the feet, squeeze the glutes and find the length in the side of the body. Lovely. Other side. So diagonal and in front of the body, looking for a stretch on the outside of the leg, reach up and over. Stretching the fingertips. And come out. So arms, feet in the turned out position. We're starting with the backs of the hands together in front. Try to keep the shoulder height just so we're working the heart, shoulders back and down, slight tilt in the pelvis, tailbone towards the floor. 
Breathe in here, breathe out. We're going to go for four of each of these exercises. Press, find some resistance as the knees bend, chest opens wide, reaching for the back wall. Breathe in, the backs of the hands come together. Twerking with the breath, looking directly forward, the chin slightly into the neck. So we have no tech neck. Always come to a really strong, tall position at the top, squeezing the glutes, firing up the leg muscles. Shoulder blades come together, shoulder blades part. Once more like this, and then we take the same starting position, but with the hands overhead. Back to the hands together, tall, breathe out, pressing down, spread the fingers, feel the shoulder blades coming together till the hands be behind your back. Breathe in, overhead, squeeze the glutes, and then soften the glutes. Inner thighs, keep the knees tracking over the toes. Head in the same vertical plane as the back of the pelvis. So over time, we'll get tired and we'll start to dip forwards, try to keep that long vertical stack position in the body. Stick with it. And float the arms down with the breath. Next position, palms together. Breathe in, breathe out, open the chest wide. And close. Any rhythmic movement, really good for switching to the parasympathetic nervous system. Find that calming order and predictability of this movement. One more like this. And then the same hand position with your hands overhead and we're opening. So hands overhead, palms together, deep breath in here, breathing out, melt the shoulders, arms down. Tall and melting down. Here we want to work on a more externally going, the more externally rotated position of the shoulders here. So for the last maybe two, try to think about if you had headlights on the front of the shoulders, beaming forwards, no dip lights here. One more with a nice open chest, like tucking the tailbone, back of the head, back of the pelvis, all your checkpoints. Brilliant. Shrug out the arms and the legs, give them a little shake out each side. We're coming into a chair pose. Bear with me. I am just going to mute. There we are. All right. Chair pose. Feet hip distance apart. We're going to start nice and easily. Let's bend the knees so we can still see the toes. Now, in a chair pose, we can always lift the toes. The toes can be on the floor, but the weight's all in the heels. So we're strengthening the, like those massive glutes and your quads and come up to standing. So that's our position for the legs. Deep breath in, come into our squat. We're taking a twist initially, hand on the opposite outer knee as we sink down into the hips and turn rotation for the spine. Breathe in center, other side. So we're going to say it side to side. I'm now going to give you some options to make it a little bit more of a challenge to try and keep the knees square. We can come into that prayer twist. Hooking the elbow on the outside of the knee, maybe looking over the shoulder, working towards that stack position in the forearms. Further progression, maybe from that prayer twist, we can extend the arms. So this is in lieu of your sun salutation, so it's fine if you're getting a little bit out of breath, this is all fine. Give yourself a break at any point. So we can use a prayer twist to get that openness in the chest and then extend the arms. One more each side. Deep breath in. Into a twist, shoulders down. Square up the knees to the front. And we're on our last side. Your version, maybe we're in our squat, we're just supporting the body into that twist. Brilliant. Shake out the legs. I'm pleased to hear. 
We've just got one quad stretch with an option of taking Nasarandrasana, the dancer. So let's start by lifting that right foot into the bottom, find a wall or a chair if you need to. And we can settle here and just breathe some left into the front of the thigh. Otherwise, if you're going for the dancer, catching the big toe side, lifting the opposite arm, deep breath in, shoulders back and down, kicking back into the hand, and we can lower down. So it's that seesaw counterbalance, the upper body forwards, the back leg lift. You can hold the posture or come in and out if you're still working with your balance. Hand can be on the hip. Oh, we're in the quad stretch. Another two breaths in your version. Find your balance. It's important to find something fixed for your gaze. Oh, and let's switch sides. Okay, might be different on the other side. So find a quad stretch, slight tilt in the pelvis so we can ease out the hip flexors down to the knee and breathe. So we change the hold in the foot if we're switching to dancer, just so we open this shoulder because that's one of the nice things about the dancer pose is that pressure of the foot against the hand works on the pecs to give us that lovely opening. The opposite arm lifts and maybe you stand here. This is a challenge in itself for the balance. Start by kicking back into the foot though so that we're firing up all the muscles that we need for our balance. And maybe coming forwards, maybe flirting with the idea of deepening the balance or just working on a nice stretch for the, the front of the thigh. Wherever you are, one more breath here. And then we're swaying out the hips and we're coming down to the mat. We're going to start on all fours. Okay, so when you're ready. Join me on all fours. Let's take a cat cow, just because it's yummy. Knees under the hips. Breathe in and look up, but more forwards and up. No straining the neck, more think about length, the front of the abdomen, the chest, and then the breath out, lifting the navel, press away from the floor, point of the toes, separate the shoulder blades. One more round, breathe in, working that mobility of the spine, breathing out and go. Now, because we're going to be in the studio soon and we'll be working on your chaturangas, let's just make sure we've got those triceps fired up and ready. We're going to come into a knee plank and the body weight comes forward initially. So let's just let me show you from the side. Instead of on all fours, you can walk the hands forward, sing the hips forwards and down and we're going to find that tricep dip and work on that strength we need in the arms so finding that weight into the hands knees and some distance apart shine the creases of the elbows forwards hands under the shoulders or slightly wider if you can't get this position in the elbows turn your fingers out a little bit to the side that's fine now we're bending and just check, it can be a really small bend and straighten, but the elbows stay in that stacked position under the, the uh, shoulders and in line with the wrists. So they come body weight, stay squarely over. So let's breathe in to a lifted position, breathe out, till the pelvis, feel the core muscles holding you in place, shoulders down away from the ears, and press back up. Try and press the whole of the hand down. I know this is tough in your biceps, your triceps. You come down just as far as you, you feel you can return from. Last three or four here. Try to maintain the length in the spine. So that idea of almost a meter rule resting on the back of your body and the back of the head. I'd have a peach under your chin. Don't drop the peach. Don't squish the peach. You've done really well. Sit back on the heels. Let's just stretch out those triceps. 
Right hand up to the ceiling, drop the fingers down the back and guide the elbow up to the ceiling. Try and lift the head. Use the fingers to walk down the spine and breathe. And then the same arm across the body. Support from underneath and gently pull the arm out of the socket and draw your arm back, drawing the bone away from bone in that joint. Shoulders down, spread the fingers or circle the wrists, both directions. And then we'll move on to the triceps. So our supine work for the core is going to be cycling, but it's going to be a staged lowering. Triceps on the side. Guide the elbow up to the ceiling, shoulders down, use the fingers to walk down your back. Working on a stretch for the triceps here, using the head to help you lift. Same arm across the body, support from underneath. Stretch into the fingers, pull back, find space. Working into the wrist, the fingers. Wonderful. All right. So we're onto our backs, knees into the chest. And from this position, we're holding the head in the hands, create a hammock for the head. So no tension in the neck. My thumbs are running down the neck as extra support. We're going to breathe in to extend the legs for one count, and then we're going to breathe out for five, four, three, two, one, as the nose and the knee come together. We breathe in to extend, breathe out, other knee in. We're lifting directly up. We're not into the obliques yet. That will be the next exercise. So there's the pattern. We breathe in, stretching the legs wherever they are, or semi-stretch, and breathing out, Knee in to the chest, curl up, try and almost lift the sit bones. So we're really maximally using those abdominal muscles. Deep breath in, and it's that slow, considered, careful lifting, lifting, lifting. So you know the pattern now. You can close your eyes. So we have so many benefits here. We're lengthening the exhalation. So that's obviously great for calming the body repetitive movement that kind of nice predictability yes yeah, strengthening just make sure your jaws soft here no clenching let's have one more each side and then we'll take it into an oblique twist so it's Opposite shoulder and knee coming together. Complete the set you're on. You need to have a full body stretch before we move on. That's more than acceptable. So it's the same pattern. Breath in in the extended position. Breath out. Shoulder and knee come together. More intensity, you lift up to the knee. Less intensity, you draw the knee closer in. We're alternating sides, at least that way when you know you've reached your point of fatigue, you're already balanced left and right. So I won't count aloud because we'll all be at slightly different points. But try for yourself to count in for one breath as you breathe, inhale, and then breathe out for five, four, three, two, one. Shoulders down. Feel that twist in the body and how the core muscles are having to come together to help you lift up towards the knee. Two sets. You can close your eyes, make a meditation of it. You can change the intensity so you're just working movement and breath. Doing well. I think we'll all be on our last set now. And then let's take a full body stretch. Put a big star, stretch into the fingers. Allow the ribs to flare and enjoy that lovely stretch to the abdomen. 
rolling onto your left hand side. Legs out straight in the torpedo setup. Tilt the pelvis, draw the pubic bone up to the, the ribs, shoulders down, and top legs moving. Lift, float at hip height, draw the knee forwards, floating on top of the floor. Lift the knee up to the ceiling, lower and return. So give me five of those. Now there's an option after we get the hip opening. If you wish to extend the leg, option only. This is all about your hip mobility and strengthening the muscles we need to support and maintain or develop that mobility in the hip. So we're gonna to have to use the stabilizing muscles of the core here to keep the upper body in the same place or more or less. So uh, to the eye visually, it's just the top leg moving. Anyone who's actually engaged in this, you'll see the lower legs pressing into the floor, the core muscles actively keeping the shoulders down. Let's have one more on this side. Really point the toes, find that pelvic tilt for a neutral spine, not a flat back. Obviously for the health of our spine, we need that concertina um, shape of the spine to absorb impact, but a slight tuck. All right, flip on to the other side, where you're ready. So head can rest on the upper arm or on the hand, point the toes, find that straight line and float the top leg. Knee comes forward, up, optional lift, and return. Now, because there's so many of the large, powerful muscles involved here, we can end up gritting our teeth or tensing the shoulders. So just do a little body scan and check there's no unnecessary muscular effort going on. There's enough required in this hip opening. A nice steady flow, slower is better. Let's make the next our last. Going really, really well. Brilliant. Roll onto your backs. Have a little rock on the spine. We're extending the right leg up to the ceiling, holding it at the back of the thigh, and extend the left leg. It's as quick, sharp out breath as we draw the thigh in, and then we breathe in to switch. If your neck is completely happy, we can lift up. So we've switched to Pilates, but it's variation on a theme. We're still using movement and breath and that exhalation, that pull in in the core, we have the powerhouse, it's turned on there. Last few rounds, shoulders down. I need space in the joint. So each time you lengthen the leg down, feel like it's just a tiny bit longer. Last two rounds. Wonderful. Hold behind the knees. Little rock, feet on the floor. Draw the knees to one side and stretch the arms open wide. Rock the head side to side, softening the jaw, stretching wide apart. Option to extend the top leg. So we'll get that diagonal stretch. And then to the other side, drop the knees, rock the head. And then option to take that diagonal stretch across the body, getting the twist, stretching. So feel length from the middle finger to the middle toe. And then we're rocking up to sitting. Coming to a cross-legged position, let's lift the arms overhead, just easing out now, a gentle sway. We're coming into a side bend, side to side. Breathe out overhead. Breathe in on the side. 
So if we continue doing this, we'll end up getting a little bit lower without any forcing, just mindful repetition. Feel free to close your eyes. Let's again think about those headlights, no dipping down. One check is if your eyes are open, looking up and see if you can look on the inside of the armpits, the shoulders not drop forwards. Last two rounds, and then we switch to a twist. Arms are open wide, letting the head sway. The twist, hand to knee, hook over the shoulder, gently side to side. So the rotational strength in the body is just great for a more solid, safer way when we walk and when we run. Rotational mobility, so important. We sometimes don't get, give ourselves time to stretch out those muscles. Last two sets. And then it's legs out. We've done a lateral flexion, here's rotation of the spine, coming into flexion extension, legs out wide. Lift the arms, toes curled up to the face, deep breath in, breathing out into a fold, rolling up, lifting the arms. The same gentle flow so we're not pushing, forcing, combining your Spine health, mobility, your cool down. Three more here. I don't know about you, but I'm getting warmer. Feels like a nice, gentle, flowing movement. It's enough to create a little bit of warmth in the body. Great. Knees, hip distance apart. Link the knees with the hand. Left arm forwards, deep breath in, breathing out, taking a twist. We're working the arms and knees, we're trying to open wide the forearm, the elbow, and the fingers, keeping them in place. Switching sides. So a gentle rotation of the spine, but we're just moving up now into the chest, trying to get the shoulders down. If you can weave the breath in, it will probably come naturally into breathing in as we switch, breathing out into the twist, shoulders down, long spine. Last two sets. And to close today, let's feel a little change. I'm just going to take a breathing exercise. So hopefully you can float through the rest of your day. Come through to a comfortable seated position. Roll the shoulders a couple of times. Going to take four rounds of humming breathe breath. We're not going to be all together. I'm the one who sounds silly because I'm all on my own. So we're going to close off the, the senses a little bit here by covering the eyes and thumbs into the ears. We'll take a deep breath in and it's a long exhalation. And this vibration is very calming for the mind. So give it a go, even if the kind of pranayama isn't really your thing. Scientifically proven, let's go. Deep breath in, breathing out, block off the ears and
Brust run. Lower the hands to the knees. Just take a moment to enjoy that quietness and stillness in the body. And when you're ready, blink open the eyes and ta-da!